Hi, I'm Yannick Hager, and I'm going to talk about our paper, GRASP-ME, our GRASP Manifold Estimator. We are considering the problem of a robot trying to pick objects. This can be done for any kind of scenario, like autonomously working robots, shared autonomy, or for collaboration tasks. What the robot typically needs is some kind of object detection algorithm and also a grasp estimation algorithm that tells the robot where to grasp the objects. Some of the typical approaches regarding grasp estimation is to use a table containing all information about the object models, depending on the predefined grasp points on the objects. So in, during the execution of grasp, the robot will just try to detect the objects and then look up in the table how and where to grasp the objects. Another potential algorithm is to just use execute random grasps and learn what is a good grasp and then tell the user later on what a good grasp is for any object. So if we are considering such a cuboid here, then our algorithm could just put, for example, show us this one good grasp here, or maybe even few more points where we can grasp the object. If our grasp if our grasp algorithm is maybe very good, then it can tell us even some more points where to grasp the object, like on along this line, or if we span these points also in the upper and lower direction, even this huge amount of points. But if we think this thought to the end, then actually what we have is are way more points that are, uh, where the object can be grasped namely a huge manifold of infinitely many possible grasp points. So in this case, this would be the huge red area here on the cuboid where we can potentially grasp the object. So instead of just using very few key point, uh, very few points where we can grasp the object, our idea is to just define the whole grasp manifold to being able to grasp any kind of object. So what is a grasp manifold? We define grasp manifolds as a region GM on our object model with a continuous closed border. Now for any point P on this grasp manifold GM, we say that it is a potential grasp point P where we can grasp the object. This means uh, that we can, that the closing point of our gripper, in our case, we used a two finger pinch gripper that any closing point of the gripper is also the same point where we'd like to grasp the object on our grasp manifold. Since some of the objects are more difficult to define regarding the grasp manifolds, we approximate our, our grasp manifold via a set of key points KPI. If we are considering these simple objects like the cuboid, the cylinder or the capsule, the grasp manifolds are quite easy to to detect, like for example, these four corner points here that span the grasp manifold or along the main axis of the object being this red line here. But if we are considering more complex objects, then this becomes more complicated and we have to manually define how and uh, how the grasp manifold is defined and where we could set the key points. Our GRASP-ME model to detect these GRASP manifolds is based on the Detectron 2 framework, which is an implementation of the mask RCNN. It gets an RGB input image, so we are using only three, the three color channels, has a backbone where we try to first use feature extraction and a region proposal to detect any kind of objects, and later on in the head of our neural network, we do the actual task like classification, finding the bounding boxes of the objects and segmentation tasks. And now in our case, we also try to predict any key points that define our grasp manifolds for the corresponding object. We implemented in simulation, so we will only depend on simulated data, which is done by using a PyBullet simulation. Then we defined manually all key points that are necessary for the grasp manifold of the corresponding objects. For the simple objects like the cuboid, the cylinder, and the capsule, we always use two key points. 
to define the grasp manifold. For the more complicated grasp manifold, depending on the object geometry, we used two up to ten key points. We used the highest number of ten key points per object since we found out that this is typically enough to define the grasp manifold. To get more out of our simulation, we also applied some domain randomization techniques, like changing the colors of the objects, the lighting conditions, and the camera angle, and the number of objects per scene. In the end, we produce RGB images and segmentation masks. Our experiments are, are trained 32,000 data points, and for the validation and testing, we have some additional 40,000 data points each. Since there is currently no algorithm that tries to detect any grasp, grasp manifolds, we did some ablation studies with our own network. So what we tried is to detect simple objects and complex objects. We used some different training settings like different iterations, uh, number of iterations, some different feature extractions. We used class agnostic neural networks versus the classification, and we even tried to predict some unseen objects. Our inference speed in the end was at 11.5 frames per second. Now let's look at some results. In the upper row, you can always see the ground truth, while the lower row holds our predictions. And as you can see from our resulting pictures, we can predict our the grasp manifolds for the for the simple objects very well. So just by defining the two key points per object, we can compute and predict a grasp manifold per object. Also for the more complex objects like some curved object uh, like a curved banana, the bottle or even the pliers we could, we could still always predict a very well-defined grasp manifold that is very close to the true to the ground truth. And also, if we have some um, some objects that have that have more than just two key points and uh, span a bigger grasp manifold like the camera or the guitar, we could still predict them quite accurately. If we go to the unseen objects, then we can see that the results are not that well. At least for the flashlights, we can still predict them quite well. And also for the apples, we can still predict the grass manifolds quite well. But if we go to the guitars, they are quite complicated in comparison to the scene objects. But if we look closely, we can still predict some grass manifolds that look not too far away from the from the grass manifolds that we manually defined, which means that we actually predict some grass manifolds that could be used to sample grasps from. If we look at real results that have never been seen, so our, our neural network is trained only on simulated data, even for real data, we can still predict some grass manifolds very well. In conclusion, our grasp manifolds summarize all possible grasps for a given object. And we approximated this via a set of key points that we tried to predict via our grasp manifold estimator GraspMe. We trained on simulated data only and compared the results for simple and complex objects and could even predict grasp manifolds for unseen objects and real data. The use cases for grasp manifolds could be autonomous working robots, shared autonomy tasks, or collaboration tasks. I'd like to thank all my supervisors, collaborators, and colleagues for supporting me. I'm ready for questions now.